Are we live? I think we're live. I think we made it. This is new. As you can see, I, th I think I also need to clean up a little bit more because we have such a wide angle now with the camera that we just installed. I hope that this is working. This is new for me as well. So I'm hoping that this works out for everyone. So in theory, we're broadcasting on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time right now so that you can choose whether you like to watch it on one or the other, but we will be uploading this to our YouTube channel at the end of this video to make sure that you can also watch it later on if you've missed anything or you want to go back. I would appreciate it if somebody um, typed a comment so I can see if I can actually see your comments. I can. I can see his side. Oh, look at that. I can see that his side is watching it on YouTube and Catherine is watching it on Facebook. Well, and, and Catherine got both of the notifications. So some people have been getting none and Catherine got two. So I think that's a, I think that's a good start. Let's see how this goes. I would definitely like your feedback at the end of this video to see how this worked for you because the, the screen size is a lot bigger and uh, I hope that the audio works uh, and uh, we'll see how this goes. My mom's here. Hello, mama. My mom's watching it on Facebook. All right. Let's get started. Let's see um, how this works out for everyone. I'm going to get this chair out of the way too. I've been using this as like a temp office at the same time to set up um, this setup. And uh, let's dive right in. There's like a lot of things coming this Friday uh, and I'm, I'm super, super excited for these. So there is our new base cloud fleece releasing tomorrow. And there is a couple of things that are really exciting about this. Number one, the cloud fleece literally feels like hugging a cloud. It's a bamboo cotton blend. Doop, doop, doop. I'll bring the red out. And I have to say, it's probably one of our only lines that has really this intense red. Because we do have our tomato red in our other um, solid lines. It's not quite as intense as this one. So this is a red that I have definitely been looking for. So this one is 70% bamboo. 30% cotton, uh, and it is Ercotec certified. So I do love that the bamboo part of this uh, gives it a little bit more softness, a little bit more drape. It's really nice and warm and squishy, uh, but the cotton still gives enough hold so it doesn't just, you know, slump together. So I find that with, uh, if you're looking for like 100% bamboo or modal, which is uh, similar, uh, our 100% uh, modal French terries, I love them, but for different purposes. I love them for drapey dresses, for uh, for shirts, long sleeve shirts, but for something like a hoodie like this, where you want a little bit more structure in the collar, I would prefer something like this. So now the back of it, I don't know if, oh, red is, maybe it was not the best color to choose because it kind of overexposes the, um, the back, but uh, it's brushed, it's super brushed, it's really fluffy on the back, and then the front has your, uh, your regular um, knit look to it, like it's so it's flat knitted. Uh, and then when you have the ribbings, which are textured ribbings, the cloud ribbing, they are exactly the same. So there are sometimes dye lots where the, the ribbing is just like slightly different. These are absolutely spot on. And I do like that they are a textured rib. Maybe I'll show a different color. Let's see, maybe the burgundy shows up better. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see the texture on this. It's a two by two uh, rib texture. Uh, and these are also a little bit wider than our usual standard ribbing. So this is uh, 50 centimeters or approximately 50 centimeters wide. So that makes it a full meter if you were to cut the tube open. So that means not only can you use this for cuffs, but this is also really great um, for clothing. So you could make, you could cut panels. Uh, for like a bodycon dress, I am full on planning on using it for my undershirts because and I have been judged for this in the past uh, for wearing undershirts. So I like under my sweater, I wear a little ribbed uh, tank top because I have very sensitive kidneys. And when it gets cold, I don't like to have cold air on my uh on my body, so I like to wear something tight underneath my uh, loose fitting sweater. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be great just because it has a little bit extra drape as opposed to the uh, the 95 cotton 5% um, elastane. And this one actually has a little bit of elastane in it. So it's not 70 and 30. I think it's, now I can't remember, it's like 60, 30 and 10. 
um, something like that. So this has it has it has a lot of stretch and recovery in it. So you could make a full-on dress. You could make a skirt out of it, um, or just use it as the cuffing. I'm gonna show. So as you can see, I have all of the cloud fleece back here. Uh, but they're really, really heavy bolts. So I'm going to show you the colors in the ribbings that I have pre-cut here for you. So we're going to do the, the warm colors first. And there are one, two, three, four, five, and six of the warmer colors. If you can see them, I tried to take a really nice picture to show them all off really nicely. So here they are. So we have the red that I just showed you, which is like a really, really nice Christmassy red or Canadian red or whatever red you want to call it. Then we have these um, that are like burgundy purples. So this one is more blue and this one is actually more, I think I called it mulled wine because it's in between a burgundy but has and like a purple. It has still a purplish hue to it. Thank you, Allison. I, I kept it all like I finished it this weekend. I finished it. I have to really go like back and forth between the screen where the comments are and like actually looking at you. Um, yeah, so my Alex sweater that I made, how'd you like it? It's made out of stuffed sweat and it's a jelly pattern, which we also have in the shop. And it has, and I used uh, a rainbow zipper on this. I did a little post on it because I'm so happy about this. It has the pockets, it has some weld pockets on it. And I only got one stain on it today. I was trying to make it with the sweater for today so I could wear it today and not get it dirty. But you know what? I bet from far away you can't even see my, uh, my um, what is it? My toothpaste stain. At least my teeth are nice and clean, right? Anyways. She made it. Denise made it. Yes. All right. So I was comparing these two. So this one, it's like a purplish red. It's like a burgundy with a purple hue. It's really, really nice. And then this one is, is more of a purple. So it has more of a blue hue to it. And then we have this purple, which is more, uh, more like our purple sage from our other line. So it's kind of a washed out uh, looking purple. And then we have these two beauties, which are also in uh, the warmer collection. So this is the salmon. Uh, and I think this is called orange cinnamon, red cinnamon, red cinnamon, I think. It's really hard to define these colors because they're really, they're so beautiful and they're so subtle in difference. But like even all of these together, if you wanted to make a color block sweater, like the one that Stephanie showed us the other day, of course, I knew that, Allison. I knew that these purples like this is your purple. You absolutely need that, Allison. Um, so if you have not seen the sweater that Stephanie uh, Lalonde made for her daughter, it was like a three-color blocked sweater with the Billy sweat. Uh, it would be absolutely great out of this fabric as well. If you have not seen it, go to the Solids Talk uh, Facebook group later on. Check it out. You absolutely have to. It's so good. Um, so these are the warm hues. And... And then we have four of the cool colors as well. Again, we have the uh, the cloud fleece and the cloud ribbing and all of these colors. So these are the cool tones. So I'll start with this one. This is the teal, which is a really, really nice, um, not too dark, not too bright, I want to say. It's like just, it's just the right tone of teal. Uh, and then this dark blue, I wouldn't quite call it a navy, even though technically from the supplier, they called it a navy. I want to say a navy would be, if I look at it with my naked eye, I would say that a navy would be more dark than this. Uh, so I just called it dark blue because it has more of a heather effect as well. So those are those two. And then this one is a denim blue to view it next to it. And this one is the Mykonos blue. Uh, also looks a little bit like a periwinkle maybe. So I'm having I'm having such a hard time. I feel like the Mykonos blue would be really nice on me because it picks up the blue from my eyes, right? Denise is late to the party. So Denise, all of this is the cloud fleece and the cloud, the matching cloud ribbing with it. It's a bamboo base. And you can always rewatch the video later if uh, if you have to look at the colors again. All right, so that's 10 colors of this uh, beautiful fabric. So I'm probably just gonna take these home and make my uh, little shirts 
for myself because it's absolutely stunning. So uh, thank you for not making me pick up all of these fluffy goodnesses, but they're they're amazing. Next up, oh, and I hope that Hisai maybe sees this because I forgot to bring the um, the Bamboo 300 over here. So Hisai, if you see this, can you bring the Bamboo 300? <laughs> and if not, I'll just have to step out for a second. So we also have this bamboo. It's all about bamboo today, apparently. It's very, it's very bamboo-y. Oh, she saw it. <laughs> My lovely assistants. I have two assistants, Hisai and Courtney, coming to the rescue to bring me the bamboo 300 fabric, which I will show you right after this. Thank you, lovely assistant. Thank you, lovely assistants. <laughs> They're awesome. Aren't they awesome? Big round of applause for Courtney and Hisai for saving saving the live video so this one thank you that was uh, that was an artistic choice that was on purpose of course it was these are heavy these are heavy people these these bolts there's so much fabric on it and bamboo in general is a heavier fabric than a cotton so even though it might have the same thickness they're actually heavier in weight because the fiber is heavier so these bolts are quite a bit so we got the plaids. So this is the regular weight jersey. So this is going to be nice for Christmas jammies or for everyday jammies or like a nice Henley shirt or whatever shirts you like to wear. So the this bamboo has a lot of drape. It has a lot of stretch and it's just really absolutely gorgeous. I'm definitely going to make uh, Christmas jammies for the whole family out of this fabric. Um, and we have this in three colors and two sizes. So this is the smaller size. So each of the checks is 2.5 centimeters. And I will show you the other size. Now they put the bamboo 300 on top of this. So all that, oh, holy moly. These feel like they weigh more than 300. They're so heavy. They're so heavy. Right, in contrast, I'm going to show you the, this is one, the white colorway, the white with black. This is the large scale. So this is a four centimeter square as opposed to the 2.5 centimeter square. So here you can see the difference between the two of them. So if you want to maybe make this for the littles and make this for the bigs and vice versa or mix it or block it or it's yeah, your creative uh, your creative choices have no limit here. So I'm going to continue with the large here. So this is the large scale. So both the same weight, same fabric, all jersey, um, all made with bamboo. They're super. See how so how springy, cozy this is, and how drapey. So this is the white and black plaid. Oh, get this out of the way. And then we have the gray, which is also really nice. How are we going to choose tomorrow? Let's do a vote. Who's going to choose the red? Who's going to choose the... Well, everybody in Ottawa kind of has to choose the red because of, you know, Ottawa red, blacks colors. No? Is that... Or is that not a thing anymore? Who is going to choose the red? Show of hands. I will choose the red, even though usually I don't wear the red. I'm usually a pink person, but I do like the red plaid. And I feel like they're going to make really cozy loungewear and everyday shirts. Red for Hisaya, red for Denise. And Denise is not even in Ottawa, and she's still going to get the red. Allison's going to get red. All right. Okay, so I'm not completely... Uh, crazy with the red thing but you know but the gray is still nice right it's still nice you could do red on top gray on the bottom but yeah the red and I did get I made sure that I got extra red because I feel like red is something oh Tanya is gonna spice it up and go with the gray but you know Tanya with the gray you can then mix your pinks and your uh what's your favorite color Tanya green I feel like was it green or pink. I don't know. Tanya likes a lot of colors. I like people that like a lot of colors because, you know, colors are for everyone. All right. So this is the gray. And then we had the white. So it's the three colors, three colors, two sizes. So either the large is the four inch square, not four inch. No, 
no, no, not inches, four centimeters square or two and a half centimeters square for the plaids tomorrow. Next up, ooh, where do I continue? My head's spinning, so many things. Yes, the bamboo 300. Everybody's waiting for the bamboo 300. The red is just too lumberjack for me. I get that. But, you know, I think that the lumberjack has a certain appeal, doesn't it? At least I think so. Um, anyhow, let's move on to the bamboo 300. So you wonder, what is the bamboo 300? I saw this fabric and I felt this fabric and I knew that I had to have this fabric because what it is, it is a jersey, not a French terry, but it is thicker and heavier, 300 GSM to be exact, than your other bamboo jersey. Why does that matter? It matters when you want to make bottom weight things. So this one, because of being so much thicker, will make much nicer leggings than your regular 230 GSM jersey, which I find is uh, kind of sheer off the bat. Now, of course, if you stretch this enough, it might get sheer-ish. I doubt, like I can't, no, unless you actually see something in behind, like I don't, let's try this. Let's try this. If I put something like behind this, can you see that? You cannot. And now if I stretch it, so I stretched it like by 50% at least, and you still can't see it. So I want to say that makes it squat proof, right? Because you're supposed to be seeing this through the, you should have, you should have seen it through the, um, through the fabric when you stretch it. The bamboo 300 is too heavy for wider leg pants since bamboo is so heavy and stretchy. I don't think that it is too heavy. It depends on how wide and like it will be heavier. Like it will drag quite a bit. So I want to say you'd have to make sure to uh, reinforce your seam at your waist or make a wider waist or use a wider elastic. But you can totally, totally do that. Like it's still, it's still within the realm of the doable for a wide leg pant. And it's just like the nice thing is it's not sheer, right? That's that is why we got it. They only make it in three colors, though. So it's more of a basic fabric for your bottom weights. Um, so this is the black. Not really sure that I have to show you what black looks like because black is black. And then there's a darker gray. Oh my goodness. Oh, they're falling. These are so heavy. Then there's a heathered dark gray. Let me put that back here. So heavy. And the heathered light gray, all of which are absolutely great um, base fabrics. And they actually go really well. So the dark gray, I just, I really hate to pick it up because it's so heavy, but the dark gray, can we maybe see that? The dark gray matches the dark gray in the plaid. It's the same gray. So you could use those two together or even with the white because the white has like a, a gray print on it. So those would go together and of course the black with all of them because there's black in all of those bamboos. So this is all the amazing bamboos that are releasing tomorrow. Uh, next up, we have two tooly things, well, a booky thing and a tooly thing. The book that came in finally is the Craft Tech style book. So you've probably seen that we have added a lot of Craft Tech um, paper fabric to our repertoire, either in the pre-cut um, sheets uh, or on the rolls, which is a really, really amazing product. So if you are new to this product, this is a really great idea uh, to put on your crafter shelf or as a Christmas gift uh, or gift for birthdays or whenever, um, just to get some ideas of what you can make with it. So this one is actually the fabric colored, like hand painted. You can dye this fabric. Um, this paper fabric and you can make it wet and you can iron and you can give it texture. You can cut it out. We've been doing lots of embroidery projects. You can sew bags out of it. There's uh, there's uh, one that already has a leather texture to it. So it would look something like this. So depending on how you treat it, you can, uh, you can even do tie dye with it. You can, oh, there's so many things you can do with this product. It's really, really fun to work with. You can make your little tags uh, or other things with it. All right, just making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Then we have the buttonhole cutter set, which I've been dying to get for such a long time, and we finally have it. What it is, it comes with 
three things. It comes with this straight cutter, and this is really, really sharp, like really sharp. And then it comes with this round cutter. So why does it come with the two of them? So when you sew your buttonhole with your sewing machine, then you would get one of these shapes, right? One of these. So for all of these, you would use your straight cutter. But for this, where you have the little knob at the end, you use the round cutter to get the round thing out. So now this comes with this apple. I have something to say about this wood apple that uh, you're supposed to be cutting on. So you put your fabric and then you hit that thing. So I thought that I had to hit really hard. So I overestimated how much force you need <laughs> To cut the buttonhole with this and I literally with it like I took a hammer to it maybe I could have just gently pushed it into the fabric by hand I didn't do that I used a hammer and I hammered it in and guess what happens my apple is now apple slices because anyway so for me uh somebody that works with brute force uh, it works better on a cutting mat. If you have an alpha cutting mat, the green ones, they are really sturdy and I did not go through that one. So I like gently hammered and I used my green alpha cutting mat, but it does come with the cutter, but just don't be upset if you also use brute force <laughs> like me and you might make apple slices out of it. Um, it just means your tools are working, right? Uh, next up, oh, I'm gonna get this box. This is it unprepared let's get all of this out so that i can get to these fabrics so i am like this time of year i do do they're laughing out there i thought that i heard them giggling they're just laughing at my apple slices well you know i got the muscles from lifting so many heavy fabrics Denise has had her buttonhole cutter for 46 years and she's never cracked the apple. Well, I mean, it takes one to no one. I don't know. Is that even the appropriate saying here? But anyways, let's move on from my apple slices <laughs> to a uh, cross stitch fabric. So this time of year, I do, I mean, I do cross stitch all year round. I want to say it is one of the first crafts that I have started when I was a kid amongst crochet and knitting. And I used to to uh, cross stitch a lot, a lot, a lot. And there's so many beautiful things and contemporary things out there. And I am very obsessed with everything pink and I'm obsessed with everything Nutcracker right now. Um, and Satsuma Street just came out with this gorgeous Nutcracker stocking uh, pattern. And I do realize that it's probably gonna take me more than one season to finish it, but I really, really wanna do it. And it's the great thing about cross stitches, you can put it down because you're just counting your stitches. So you can count, you can put it down and you can pick it up even a year later. You won't forget where you were. Um, so we got some new Zweigart fabrics uh, in. Uh, so Zweigart is uh, a German company. So these are fabrics, uh, Aida fabrics made in Germany. They're really nice and high quality. And they have some really fun colors because most of the time you just get like your white, your off white, your antique white, and then maybe a black uh in there so i did enjoy seeing these colors so this is the light pink and it's really hard to see that it's light pink i'll hold it next to the gray and the I'll, I'll hold it next to this white can you see that hold on let me take this out so there's some really great exciting projects out there or the satuma sheet i did um some of the christmas baubles last year and it's it's uh they're really fast and what's nice is you can put them in a little hoop and make them a christmas ornament so can you see that Oh my goodness. I feel like this color doesn't show up. So this is a really, really nice uh, baby pink. And this is the Christmas red. I was waiting, like, I swear, I tried so hard last year to get this Christmas red and it was not available anywhere. So finally we got the Christmas red. Uh, you could even do the Christmas cat, you can do Christmas ornaments, or you can just do other things that you like to use a 14 count Aida cotton fabric. You can see the little uh, four. Uh, then we have the pre-grid. Do you see that? Yeah, it's like my light is just really bright. The pre-gridded fabric, which is really nice as well, um, which is especially suitable for full coverage projects. And then we have a couple other colors. Let me dig a little bit deeper for you. Some more red. And these are all fat quarters, so they're all pre-cut to size. 
then we have the mystic, which you know why I have to say that this is, hold on, right here, the mystic. What's so mystic about it is it looks very similar to the sage. It's, uh, it's just a lighter sage, and this is the darker sage. Does that make sense? Then we have this, um, now I can't remember what it was officially called, misty blue, the misty blue, all made in Germany. And then the Christmas green. I'll take the Christmas green out as well because it's absolutely stunning and beautiful. Any other cross stitchers on today? So the red and the green, I mean, come on. I'll definitely show them off with some gold sparkly threads maybe. And if you have not known, we do have all the 504 DMC colors available and in stock at Mimi's. We also have the gift sets, uh, the, the boxes also available and in stock. So if you're if you're looking to gift somebody um, who is a cross stitcher or if you want to take cross stitching up, we have everything that you need here as well. All right. Next up, the faux leathers have arrived, either restocked, like all the Moras, all the colors of our Mora are restocked. So if you've been waiting for the black or charcoal or whatever it's called, that the really dark one, it's back in stock now. Um, and we are just sending out all of the kits for the, um, for the bag so along that is coming very soon. If you have not pre-ordered a kit, but you still want to participate in the bag so along, um, you can still purchase the items individually. We're just not making any more kits, uh, but we can definitely let you know what you need to purchase in order to participate. And we can send you a link to the group where we will be holding this. So now... I'm not sure if I, if she packaged me two things here. I think they're both the same. So I just want to show you what came in. So there's some new colors and some restocks. So this is Mora Cognac back in stock. This is Beatrice Black. So this is our textured faux leather. Uh, I do have a sample bag at the store as well in this. So Beatrice Black. Then we have Roxana Black, which I think we had, but it was out of stock for a really long time. It does look like a real leather. Like this is the one that has me uh, that has me stumped the most, but it is a faux leather. And we have it in the black. It's also the thickest that we have. Black Roxana. And now new navy blue Roxana. See this texture? It's so good. So if you're planning on making some bags, Roxana navy blue. Beatrice in pink. Look at this. This screams Mimi bag right there. All right. Mimi bag, Beatrice. And then I am obsessed with this yellow. All year I've been obsessed with yellow. Beatrice in yellow. Amazing. Next up, Roxana in pink. No, that's not Roxana. Oh, goodness. Not Roxana. These are Rex. One of my favorite leathers. So if you're just starting out to sew bags, this is an easy leather to start with. It's not as thick as the other ones. Um, it's really easy to sew for some small projects. Uh, and it comes in really fun colors. So we have the Rex in this beautiful matte pink. Uh, and the Dusted Rose. Let me see pink, Dusted Rose. Pink, Dusted Rose. And then we have the Metallic Purple and the Metallic Teal. I also like using it for little details on my clothing sometimes. If I do eyelets, if I actually do the actual prim grommets, I make my patches out of these, and that's really, really fun. Um, I think those were all the restocks I was supposed to talk about. And then last but not least, I do want to mention that next week, Saturday, November 5th, is when our Mimi Studio opens. It's our first day. So if you are in the area, in Ottawa, in Canada, where we are, we would love to have you on our studio opening day. Um, you can reserve spots online. I think they're like $35 for the day. So it's not from 9 to 6 on November 5th. You can come in. You can bring your machines. You can use our space. So you get to use our cutting station, our ironing station. You can, uh, there's a whole bunch of things. You get a grab bag. Uh, so like a very special present only for that first day. Um, so spots are filling up. So I encourage you to um, reserve your spot for next week, November the 5th, 
Now I kind of want to show you, but now I have to bring my whole, let me see if I could just bring my laptop and this with me. Bear with me. I will walk you guys over there. Let's see. I hope I don't fall. I need to have like, look, I have my laptop in hand and I have my stand in hand. So you're ready for me to turn around because our studio is right over here. So there's a really big studio space here as you come in. Oh, thank you. Okay. My lovely assistant, Hisai, is holding the laptop <laughs> while I show and I'm going to go on the other side of the camera so you can see. So we can come in, we come in here and we're still waiting for one more cutting mat and our uh, ironing station to come in. So, but here is all like your cutting, your ironing, uh, and all of your tools are going to be here that you can use. And then we have 13 spots for you to sit. So there's lots and lots of space so that you're not squished with anyone, lots of light, uh, and we'll have all of our power outlets and everything set up. So these machines were just set up so I can take a picture, but we can move them further apart. Like somebody's going to be sit on this side and one on this side. So we'll have a lot more space. This was just for my photo op that I put them like this. You can rent these machines as well. We will have them available um, if you don't want to haul your own machine. Um, and then you can try out these beautiful baby lock jubilants. And we are working on our cozy um, corner here. We're still missing the couch, but that's going to come as well. So if you are a crafter and you don't want to sew, but you want to come hang out with everybody, you want to cross stitch, you want to knit, you want to crochet, or just B, you can also reserve a spot in the Mimi Lounge. And we will have coffee, we will have teas, uh, we'll have a couple of, uh, of little niblets for you. Um, you can either bring your lunch, we do have a microwave, or you can go to one of the restaurants close to us. So I really hope uh, that you are going to join us for next week. If you need more info, just let us know. And um, thank you so much for watching. And I do think that this worked uh, pretty, pretty well. But please do let me know, give me some feedback of how this uh, broadcast worked for you. And thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to see how I can end this broadcast so you don't have to listen to me all day. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye, Mimi Makers.